to make a perfect study plan for physics chemistry and biology so is it required to make a special plan our formula booklets important in the case of physics okay memorizing terms and concepts important in the case of biology so who would like to take this question amongst the toppers yes jacob come on so so physics it was mainly concept oriented stuff except uh, in the 12th was then chapters like semiconductors you have to remember things a lot apart from those everything is concept oriented so if you are clear with the concept you can solve whatever range of questions they give you if you are clear with the concept so physics is mainly clearing the concepts asking all doubts like answers are accessible any time we can doubt, ask doubts without any hesitation so as long as we keep asking doubts and clearing our doubts we will be clear with the with the concept so until we are clear with the concept ask doubts so physics was mainly about that and uh, like towards the end just two weeks before need or three weeks before need you have a lot of things to do so it is not practical to go through the whole chapter again in physics so making formula books will be really helpful like a uh, 50 page formula book that consists of all the chapter all the formulas in 11th and 12th physics you can just flip through the pages you can go through the chapter uh, formulas that you feel you'll forget doing this towards the end would be really helpful and make sure that you have yeah you have revised the whole thing towards the end so that's for physics and along with all these things solving a lot of questions like before every cpt we had like one and a half week time so after being clear with the concept and the answers notes i used to solve a lot of questions like whatever is available from whatever books i have like dc pandey or hc verma or even the coaching module so solving a lot of questions will expose you to the different types of question that can be asked so like if you're not able to solve a question introspect on why you're not able to solve ask the doubt then and there clear your doubts so this is all i can say for physics bio is just ncert uh, except for some chapters like human physiology anatomy you need to kind of understand the concept so apart from that it's mainly remembering the facts in ncert and to remember the facts you have to repeatedly revise it so once you are done with your first study plan or once the cert uh, cert finishes teaching the chapter you have to like revise the chapter in regular intervals before a uh, cpt or before a phase test like multiple revisions will do it it will help you remember all the facts uh, then for chemistry organic chemistry has a lot of concepts in it so understanding the concept and remembering what uh, the facts will make you will make it easy the one thing i struggled in chemistry was inorganic chemistry because there are a lot of facts and lot of uh, like reactions to remember and i felt it really tough so for that i had used short notes short notes in the sense uh, like in periodic table we have 18 groups so if we make a one page a4 sheet for each group we can revise it very quick like just a one page a4 sheet we can just revise it in 10 minutes so doing this repeatedly will make sure that you have all the facts in your mind doing this in regular intervals will make you familiar with inorganic chemistry and then the next part of chemistry is physical chemistry it's just numericals question practice solve a lot of questions and uh, being familiar with the calculations will do it and uh, one thing i forgot to add is bio we tend to ignore questions like uh, we think it's just memory based it is memory based thing but there are variety of questions that can be asked so after doing your study part in bio practice a lot of questions but it should be ncert based solving questions out of ncert i don't think it is relevant here solving ncert based questions from specific lines of ncert would really help remember the facts so this is all i can say about the study plan for physics chemistry and biology thank you my dear yes saditya sir your inputs uh, i like to go through this point by point uh, let's start with physics for physics uh, i would say do not postpone things once the chapter is over solve the questions don't uh, you know think there are 100 questions okay i'll solve 20 of them now 20 tomorrow or let's 20 in the morning 20 in the afternoon 20 in the evening that's a uh, that's something if you want to do it if you are able to do it consistently you may do it but uh, i would say do not postpone things do the questions as soon as possible solve uh, you know maximum number of problems go for the package first 
uh, solve the archives. It's really, really important to solve the archives to analyze the trends of questions which are being asked. And I would say while solving the archives too, don't think that, uh, you know, from this topic questions have not been asked. So let me skip this topic. You know, I find this topic difficult and I find that they have not asked questions from this topic. So what is the use of studying this topic? You know, it's, it's nothing like that. All topics are important when it comes to exams like NEET because no one can predict uh, which kind of question will come from which kind of a topic. So that is it for physics. Solve maximum number of questions. Ask doubts because no one, not even the biggest stopper in the world can solve every question in physics without getting a doubt. Please ask your doubts, get them clarified and get them clarified as soon as possible. Do not postpone, uh, you know, doubt clarification. Going for chemistry, uh, organic, inorganic and physical are really three different things. For physical chemistry, the approach uh, which you use for physics should be considered because uh, it's mostly similar. And uh, for organic and inorganic though, apart from, you know, the regular answers to such kind of questions, I feel like there are a few different things which you can do. Uh, we still have a lot of time. I know that, uh, you know, like you wouldn't have completed the portions by now or the syllabus by now. So I would say you still have time. So these, these things are when, uh, for when you still have time. Let's start with inorganic. Inorganic, uh, I would say it is very useful if you are able to analyze the reactions which you get. Like, for example, let's just say in 11th standard you have stoichiometry and uh, stoichiometry and redox reactions and stuff like that. I would uh, say that it would help you a lot if you are able to analyze the redox reactions and predict the behavior of, you know, chemicals. Let's, let's say you have, you know, like you have a Br- minus atom and uh, you want to react it with some other thing. You have to, you know, like try to understand why it is reacting like that. What is the purpose of the reaction and, you know, stuff like that. And when you analyze the reaction, like when you go in depth, in depth into the reaction and when you analyze a lot of reactions in the same manner, I would say uh, after, you know, a course of time, you will be able to predict reactions by yourself if you do it properly. See, the thing is, uh, NCRT reactions are very, very important, especially for inorganic chemistry. I would say, uh, you know, before straight up mugging up the uh, NCRT reactions, I would say try to predict it yourself. Check if what you have predicted is correct. You know, that will give you, uh, it will boost up your confidence because inorganic chemistry is really stressful uh, for people who are not able to memorize, you know, stuff at once. If you are able to predict the behavior of chemicals, it will be very, very helpful. And when it comes to organic, it is extremely conceptual. Uh, you know, uh, like basics are very, very important. If you are not thorough in the basics, you won't be able to do any kind of question, not even the easiest of the questions. Basics and named reactions are two things which you should be thorough with before touching organic. So even in organic, uh, you know, there are some questions in the package or in the tab assignment or in uh, some of the tests uh, which you would have written or will write in the future. The questions won't be direct. They won't ask you a direct named reaction. You know, that's because they want to improve your concept, uh, you know, strength. What I would say is you might, ha you will have to think like uh, if I give a big, aromatic compound and I reacted with some like let's say some hydroxyl ion or something I would uh, you know recommend you to think what will happen before you know thinking of any named reaction or you know thinking of what step to like proceed or if they ask you to you know, write out a synthesis or something I would recommend you to think about what will happen if you use a certain chemical or it's like more of like you become the chemical itself and look out for what you want if I want an electron from a compound or if I want a proton from somewhere or if I'd like to extract a halogen from somewhere and replace myself over there, you know, uh, become, you'll have, you'll have to think from the point of view of the chemical that will help you to, uh, you know, uh, make e uh, reactions easier for you. And coming to biology, there are two ways to do it. Okay. The first way is you have an eidetic memory and you can remember everything at once. That is not possible for everyone. Uh, if it is possible for you, well and good. But the other way to do it is just, you know, extremely rigorous. You will have to go through it so many times that, you know, when you uh, visualize the NCRT textbook in your face, you should be able to understand where the pictures are, in which paragraph, which words will come. And, you know, that, that, is, uh, that is really like the pinnacle of your preparation. When you read so much that the NCRT textbook starts visualizing itself in front of you when you go through questions and stuff like that, that is, that is the only way to do it if you are not able to, you know, have a photographic memory. And uh, coming to formula booklets, it is only useful at the end of your preparation. If you go through formula booklets uh, when you're, you know, introduced to a chapter or something, it is very, very difficult to predict what will happen later. Because let's just say for thermodynamics, you've been taught thermodynamics and, uh, you know, you make a formula sheet and from day one, you start revising the formula sheet. The thing is, uh, formulas are not always, you know, very uh, easy to understand because a formula might mean something else when it comes in a different sort of a situation. You can't apply the same formula everywhere. So, uh, if you solve questions and if you're thorough with them and then you make a formula booklet, that is useful. 
if you just make a formula booklet and depend on it for your future i don't think that is going to you know help make a difference and coming to memorizing terms and concepts i would say instead of giving you know over importance to memorizing terms and concepts i would just say uh, to you know go through the ncert chapter so many times that memorizing itself does not become a different task it should it should go you know hand to hand with your studies that's what i would like to say thank you wonderful aditya sai so the way he explained no it was too good right sir yeah he has summed up all the points all the loose ends yeah, i believe he was dreaming textbooks man because the way he said no visualizing everything that was there in the page <laughs> i seriously can understand that wonderful in fact that's very true like you know when you are at that level of preparation the moment you read the question the pages turn and those paragraphs those lines will come in front of your eyes yeah that's right Thank you.